Hello and welcome back to Tiny Artist TV. It is August day three. The theme for today is dressed up. So initially when I saw this theme, I was thinking of doing something very Victorian, something very fancy. But then I started thinking, well, what if the ghost or spirit was in disguise? And that led me thinking to the Jorogumo. And those who have played Okami may be familiar with this, or those who just love Japanese culture may be familiar with this specific spirit. So it is a type of yokai, which is either a demon or a spirit, and it is a spider woman, and it's usually found in either caves or large bodies of water, and she disguises herself as a beautiful young woman to lure in victims, and then reveals herself as this carnivorous spirit. Um, overall... I was actually really pleased with this design. I did have another one that I started out with, but the style was wrong, so I started over and just kind of whipped this one out. Again, very Okami style. Um, not to immediately rip off of it, but it was a big inspiration for the composition as a whole. I started playing around with the legs and I wasn't quite happy with the way this was going. I wanted to make her look a little more casual, but decide that wasn't quite right and it made the composition look a little wonky. So I get rid of that and kind of minimize everything, put it over into one side and start playing with the idea of making this into a sumie style drawing. And uh, sumie is a type of Japanese ink painting. I do have a little blurb about that later in the video, but I thought that style would be appropriate considering that this is a Japanese spirit, Japanese myth, um, and as far as the theme of dressed up, in the initial sketch I did have her in a very intricate kimono type outfit, but again the style and the composition was just not quite working with what I wanted this overall piece to look like. So we end up with this one, which I am very satisfied with at the end result. I have a little trouble getting started with the brush technique here because I work with GIMP and GIMP is as customizable as Photoshop is but it doesn't quite have that gradiated brush. The pen pressure isn't quite right so I have to play around with a few brushes to get the technique just right and I decided to go with the uh, same style that I used for the first two pieces. It's very fine line art and going back in and erasing some pieces to a point, but still keeping some of the lines bolder to give it that inky feeling. And here I'm just working out the strands of the hair and the details in the hair and just finishing up the sketch. As far as the face is concerned, I wanted it to look more like a mask than an actual spider's face. And so when I start getting into the coloring of this, I do make it a very pallid, like a just a white mask to kind of go back into that, again, a Japanese Oni type style, but to give it that traditional theater type feel to it. The Jorogomo myth can be found in several writings from the Edo period. A couple of examples are the Taihei Hyakumonogatari and the Tonui Gusa. Uh, it's a collection of stories, well, a couple of collections of stories that vary from 
a woman who is trying to trick a soldier into taking a child that is clearly not his to lure him in. And then there's also the story of the woodcutter, and that story actually has several different variations. In one of the stories, um, the woodcutter loses his axe, and she returns it. She's in the form of a woman, and she tells him not to tell anybody else what happened. Uh, one night he ends up getting drunk, and then he ends up telling the story, and he just kind of vanishes. And a lot of Japanese stories that's referred to as being ghosted away or spirited away. Uh, Easter egg there, that's where that term for the movie came from. But he tells a story and the next day he just isn't there. He doesn't wake up. He's disappeared. And in another variation, he falls in love with the woman that he meets at the waterfall. And he sees her every day, but every time he goes to see her, he gets weaker and weaker. And eventually he goes to see a priestess and she explains what's happening. That the woman he's been seeing is actually this spider spirit, the Jorogumo. And she breaks the curse over him. But he's still in love with her after he realizes that she's the spider spirit. So he goes to the uh, Tengu, which is a wind bird type oni, and uh, he asks the Tengu for permission to marry this Jorogumo. I'm trying not to laugh because this is, oh, this is rich. Um, and the Tengu denies him permission. So in a fit of, I guess, fury and passion, he throws himself over the waterfall and gets tangled in her web and disappears into the water. In another variation, this is similar to the first one where instead of getting ghosted away, he ends up getting pulled in by the invisible string of the Jorogomo and the next day his body is found hanging over the waterfall of the Joran Fall. So those are just a couple of the Jorogomo uh, story adaptations. There are plenty more, and this is... I love creepy myths and legends, so this is kind of one of my favorites. And now that I'm finished with the sketch, I can describe what I'm doing with the ink here. So this is where I start getting into the sumie technique that I had mentioned. Just adding the bolder bits of ink and smudging it out to make it look like brush strokes. For this one I use the oil brush number one, or it's oil brush or oil pastel in the GIMP setting. And I've set my smudge to, I usually set it to about 72 to 85, just depending on how much I want to pull the initial dropping of the color. With this one it's at the higher end to kind of draw it out. And then I go in with the airbrush to give it some lighter texture. And then I use the softer setting on the smudge and have that set to back at the 72, 73 gauge mark. To just give it a little bit of softer smudge to it. And give the petals some of the little streaks in there. Just filling in the shadows. A lot of what makes this technique work as far as trying to imitate the sumie is that it's really hard to mess it up, which is great for artists like me who uh, start out really well and then try to add color and end up messing it up. So this is a very forgiving style, whereas you're only working with black and white, and I do add a little bit of color in the end, just to give it something of interest. But with this one, it's three layers. You have the background, you have your ink layer, you have your line art. And with the ink layer, you can just kind of play around with how you want the light and shadow to look, where you want to push. If you were doing this on paper, where you would want the darker, thicker lines to go, which would be where your shadows traditionally are, where you want your strongest forms to show. And the thinner lines where you kind of want it to work with the piece, but not overpower the piece. And here adding 
this isn't... So it's more of a blended technique that I'm using. Most of the sumie is actually going to be around the hair and the petals and the shadow. Whereas with the face and the body, I do use a more traditional airbrush, softer shading. Which I think works. And it's almost, it almost ends up being a mixed media piece because when I add the white, I have in my mind that I'm going over this with chalk pastel. And so as I'm putting in the white and putting in the highlights on the petals, it ends up looking more like a charcoal piece or chalk pastel piece mixed in with some sumie technique. The other thing is that, as you can see, with uh, digital sumie, it's still much more forgiving because when you work with pen and ink, those of you who've worked with pen and ink or any kind of traditional art, you know that there is no control Z, there is no undo, <laughs> so you're just kind of stuck with what you have and you have to work with it, uh, make it work, and in the first draft I was futzing around with the hair and didn't it was getting too dark so simple enough I just go back into my steps and undo the last step that I wasn't happy with and start over with it and decide to go a little bit simpler with the streaks make them bolder here I'm adding a little bit more ink shape to the legs to make them look more like strokes of ink instead of just the points. And this was the first draft of the kanji. So this, the first draft here is the literal translation of the Jodogomo versus the alternate translation. Because there are two ways to write this. And the second way is considered a uh, Jukui-kun, oh sorry, Jukuji-kun which is a style of kanji or style of naming things in Japanese where it focuses more on the actual meaning of the word versus the individual meaning of the kanji itself. So again, this one is the literal translation that translates to woman spider, whereas the second one, which is the correct one, uh, translates more closely to entangling newlywed woman which of course ties back into the stories that she appears in as a young woman who is enticing these men. Another little, I guess, fun fact about the uh, Jorogomo is that she's usually depicted manipulating or with uh, these tiny fire-breathing spiders. I thought about adding those in because my other pieces do have the spirit lights or like the extra little bits around it, but I liked this on its own and felt like adding the little spiders would have made it a little bit too busy. I do add the little bits of color just to give it, again, some more interest. I think I'd mentioned that earlier, sorry if I'm repeating myself, um, but with the fire spiders. That may be something I incorporate into a different piece, depending on what themes come up in August. I haven't looked at the full prompts. But for this one, I wanted just the Jorogomo in all of her spidery, gory glory. 
just adding just a little bit of ink splatter to kind of push the idea of it being a uh, sumie painting. And here is where I start fixing the kanji after I've realized that I've given it the uh, more literal translation versus the cultural translation. I'm just trying to go over the lines to make it look a little bit more like a ink brush. And here we have the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for tuning in and have a weird day. See you next time.